welcome to lecture on advanced geotechnical engineering course. So we are in module 7 on geotechnical physical modeling lecture number 10. So module 7 lecture 10 on geotechnical physical modeling. So we have introduced ourselves to the requirement of the centrifuge based physical model testing but in this particular lecture we will try to bring out some relevance of centrifuge based physical modeling to geotechnical problems especially when we take some selected problems in geotechnical engineering we will try to review whether the centrifuge based physical modeling is warranted or not warranted. So we are aware now that the small scale physical modeling can be performed at 1G or NG field. So physical modeling at NG requires a geotechnical centrifuge to carry out model experiments. So in order to carry out you know the centrifuge based physical model test we require a geotechnical centrifuge to induce high gravities. Now consider some few simple situations where physical modeling especially at small scale at 1G may be adequate and others were small scale physical modeling at NG will be required. So where it is required where it is not required. Uh, by taking some selected problems we can be reviewed. Now consider as a first example slopes in sand. So here in this particular figure a typical slope which is formed with a dry sand is shown here and the slope inclination of the sand is say beta and a certain height h. Now if we know that this phi is the friction angle and this is the friction angle uh, the maximum friction angle whatever it can uh, have uh, for a stable condition is called angle of repose. So for beta greater than phi that is for slope inclination greater than phi the slope is unstable that means that the slope takes a uh, you know profile which is equivalent to that uh, safe sloping uh, slow, uh, safe uh, friction angle. So the slopes in sand are not stable at angles greater than the angle of repose phi in respect of the height of the slope. So whatever may be the slopes in sand are not stable at angles greater than the angle of repose irrespective of the height of the slope. So for dry cohesionless sand the stability criterion may be stated as beta as less than pi. For example if the beta is less than phi we can say that the stability of the slope can be ensured. Let us look how this can be explained by using tau sigma plot. So consider uh, you know the on the y axis uh, uh, tau and the x axis sigma and here this is the uh, failure envelope and this is the friction angle. So this is the you know friction angle whatever the soil can take and let beta be the slope inclination. Now if you look into this as long as beta less than phi uh, the slope will be stable that is what actually we have been discussing. Suppose but beta equal to phi that means that all points uh, you know uh, in this particular uh, line will be in uh, contact with the failure plane. So for beta less than phi the tau is, greater, uh, tau is less than tau, tau f that means that for beta less than uh, uh, phi you can see that uh, uh, for uh, beta less than phi whatever may be the sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 whatever may be the sigmas the tau will be always less than tau f. Tau f is the shear stress at failure and tau f the shear stress at a particular sigma. So for beta equal to pi then tau is equal to tau f for beta is equal to phi moment this line is intersects with the this line uh, this line joins with this line then tau is equal to tau f. So for beta greater than phi the tau is actually greater than tau f so slope would have already failed at all depths when tau greater than tau f the slope would have already failed at all depths. So that means that slopes cannot be raised at an angle steeper than the friction angle whether in small or full scale tests. So slopes cannot be raised at an angle steeper than the friction angle uh, whether in a small scale or in full scale when you do not use any reinforcement inclusions. So slopes in sands when beta less than phi you can say that here uh, for all levels of sigma tau will be less than tau f. Similarly the slope is actually stable and independent of the depth of the slope for beta less equal to phi then tau will be equal to tau f 
the slope is just stable and for beta greater than phi the tau is greater than tau f the slope would have already uh, failed at all depths. So slopes cannot be raised at an angle steeper than the friction angle whether in small scale or in the full scale. So uh, what we need to we have understood when we have taken the slopes in uh, sand is that uh, it is irrespective of the height of the slope as long as uh, beta less than uh, phi uh, you know as long as the beta is less than phi uh, you know the centrifuge model tests are actually not warranted because even 2000 gravity or 3000 gravity whatever the normal stress is actually in use this uh, is independent of the depth. So uh, if we are actually doing 1G model tests with uh, uh, you know the slope inclinations less than uh, phi then uh, you know they hold good. Uh, similarly let us consider uh, you know these uh, slopes in clay but before that uh, let us look into the undrained stability analysis uh, by Taylor's method. So uh, from the Taylor's method actually has been deduced from the uh, undrained uh, you know slope stability analysis where you know factor of safety is the lowest factor of safety obtained from the circular arc analysis. So from this we can actually write weight of the you know the portion of the soil which is involved within the failure surface is a function of gamma the unit weight and h height of the slope and geometry of the failure surface. So the geometry of the failure surface can be characterized by three angles which are called alpha, beta and theta and which are you know by rewriting one we can write that C by factor of safety is equal to it is indicated as C suffix R is equal to gamma H into function of alpha beta theta which is nothing but the so called the geometry of the surface is indicated like this. So CR is the required cohesion to just maintain a stable slope and function of B alpha beta theta is a pure number and designated as a stability number NS. So this is actually the stability number which is put forward by the you know by Taylor in 1948. So Taylor's stability number is given as Ns is equal to Cr by gamma h. Now in order to get this you know for different the stability numbers the Taylor actually has given Taylor's curves wherein the tail stability number is actually is on the y axis and this is for different slope inclinations. Let us see for beta is greater than 53 degrees we can see that you know the, the uh, you know the is independent of uh, you know the uh, depth factor independent of depth factor and uh, we can actually get uh, you know different value for different inclinations like 60 degrees the stability uh, uh, factor is about 0.191 so so for 60 degrees uh, you can see that the stability factor is about 0.191 and uh, similarly for 90 degrees it is about uh, for 90 degrees it is about 0.261 that is for the vertical cut. So 1 by 0.261 into C by gamma which is nothing but 3.81 Cu by gamma which is equivalent to the critical height of a slope at which is 4C by gamma. So by using this Taylor's curves one, one can actually obtain the stability numbers and for, for beta less than 53 degrees the stability number is in you know found to depend upon you know the so called d by h depth factor which is also indicated as small n. So for gentle slopes the critical surface goes below the toe and always restricted above the strong layer hence it depends on its location. So for, for beta greater than 53 degrees the stability number is found to influence only on the slope inclination and failure surface is assumed to pass through the toe of the slope. So all critical slip circles are passed through the toe. So this is because for such steep slopes the critical failure surface passes through the toe of the slope and does not go below the toe. So for a vertical cut beta is equal to 90 degrees and ns is equal to 0 0.26 under short term condition with factor of safety is equal to 1 at for a critical height at c we get 3.85 into cu by gamma. So this is actually obtained from Taylor stability number. So in case of undrained condition either with either with slopes or with vertical cuts by using this we can actually get so why this is being shown is that this is actually used in designing some of the centrifuge model tests actually particularly with you know slope inclinations which is actually greater than 53 degrees for you know showing the stability of a slope under undrained conditions.
okay so this is uh, in our example if you are actually having uh, d by h and beta and beta which is uh, less than uh, say 53 degrees then this is the chart which is required to be adopted we can see that in that case there is a possibility that the slope surface actually passes through the below the base so it is actually called base failure so this is depth factor is given for depth factor d by h is equal to 1 it can be seen that beta for beta greater than 53 n is equal to 0 that is the the you know the this this n is equal to 0 so that indicates that is independent of uh, you know the slope circle actually this n value is 0 indicates that this n value 0 indicates that the slope actually the failure surface passes through the uh, passes through the toe of the slope. So that is what is given nh is nothing but the distance from the toe of the slope h is the height of the slope and d is the total height once it is given here. So for by keeping d by h and beta and n can be obtained and for d by h is equal to 1 d by h is equal to 1 and beta greater than 53 degrees uh, we get n, n is equal to 0. So that indicates that uh, uh, you know the slope surface uh, slip surface passes through the uh, you know the toe of the slope. So uh, after having uh, taken uh, you know this uh, with the slopes in sand we said that if beta less than 5 the slope can be raised to any height even at 1g or ng and the stable slope angle is going to be the same uh, and in this case the actuating force is the body force due to gravity and the resting force is the shearing resistance due to friction. So uh, in case of a slope in sand what we said is that if a beta less than phi the slope can be raised to any height even at uh, 1g or ng and uh, the stable slope is angle is uh, going to be the same. Uh, in the case of in this case actuating force is the body force due to gravity and the resting force uh, is the shearing resistance due to friction. So let us see with the introduction from slopes in clay uh, particularly with undrained uh, analysis uh, for from the given by Taylor stability chart let us look into it how it can be deduced by uh, for slopes in clay. So consider a slope in clay where uh, we have got uh, Cu uh, and gamma as the uh, you know soil parameters gamma is the unit weight of the soil here in this uh, slide the d is indicated as uh, depth below the uh, toe up to the firm layer and h is the height of the slope beta is the slope inclination. So we know that the factor of safety is nothing but uh, you know is a function of h beta cu gamma d by using uh, either Buckingham's Pi theorem or Rayleigh's uh, uh, you know Bucking, Rayleigh's, uh, Rayleigh's, uh, uh, analysis, Rayleigh, Rayleigh's method we can say that factor of safety is equal to beta function of beta d by h and cu by gamma h. Then we said that for similarity between model and prototype uh, each and every pi term has to be identical. So in the process we discussed that uh, the cu by gamma has to be reduced by 1 by n times in order to uh, in a, if you are actually having a small scale model uh, reduced by 1 by n times at normal gravity. In case if you are having a small scale model uh, tested at gamma m is equal to n gamma p that is enhanced gravities then we say that the c by gamma need not be reduced and then automatically get reduced once gamma increases to uh, gamma in model becomes n gamma. So but, we, but it ensures that the cu in model prototype are identical. So cu in model prototype identical physically means that the stress strain behavior of the soil is uh, retained so that's a, that ensures that there is a similarity between model and prototype. So this we have already discussed so here it implies that in order to maintain the margin of the safety same margin of safety the model and prototype on the not only not only the geometry but also cu by gamma h should be same. So if g can be increased by a scale factor n that is what we actually we have been talking cu by factor of safety rho g h is equal to function of beta into d by h if you increase g we reduce h then the soil particles uh, strength cu and density rho can be kept unchanged. <coughs> so based on uh, Taylor stability chart which uh, we have discussed it just now the maximum slope height of the slope uh, that is hc at factor of safety is equal to 1 for beta is equal to 60 degrees is given by uh, the stability factor is 0.191. So we can write hc is equal to 1 by 0.191 into cu by gamma. So this indicates that 
in order to have in order to attain in fact uh, you know critical height the slope actually has to raise to this height so that you know it will actually have a factor of safety is equal to 1. Suppose if you are having a model slope of having uh, HM is the model height then the ratio of HC by HM uh, will be uh, you know very high uh, and then you know uh, which uh, you know uh, which will actually ensure that factor of safety will be uh, very high. So the actuating force is the body force due to gravity and the resisting force is the constant undrained cohesion. So in this case the actuating force is the body force due to gravity and the resisting force is the constant undrained cohesion. So here it is not possible to carry out small scale model tests uh, at 1G on slope in play as the slope will fail only and when H reaches to HC. So what we have understood uh, in this case particularly with slopes in clay is that based on Taylor stability chart the maximum slope height stable height of the slope is uh, you know at factor safety 1 is for that B is beta is equal to 60 degrees. So the actuating force is the body force due to the gravity and the resting force is the constant undrained cohesion. So here the uh, slope will only fail if H tends to equal to HC if you are actually maintaining the slope prepared reduced by 1 by n times and kept in the laboratory it will only tend to dry because it has actually has got very high factor of safety in the small physical dimensions. So here it actually says that the centrifuge model testing is actually warranted for you know understanding for a stability of a slope in undrained clay and also there is a requirement that uh, the Cu has to be maintained constant and uh, you know it, it actually clearly says that you know it is not possible to carry out the small scale model test at 1G on slope in clay as the slope actually will only fail uh, as H tends to HC. So let us see some typical uh, you know the slope failures in a centrifuge uh, this is after Ruhr University Bochum a uh, front view of the slope before uh, you know testing is actually shown here and uh, this is one of the uh, traditional uh, uh, in a very uh, you know uh, earlier uh, testing of a slope which is actually with a kaolin clay. So you can see that once the, the slope is actually uh, you know subjected to failure you can see that the development of the uh, slip surface here. So this is the formation of the slip surface and uh, the heaving portion can be seen here the heave portion can be seen here and the tension cracks formation can be seen here. So this is the slope which is actually formed with a saturated consolidated clay and you can see that the tension cracks. So these are the earlier you know imprints which are actually used for distinguishing you know the occurrence of the failure phase. Nowadays the advancement of the techniques like particle based velocimetry or digital image correlation techniques allow you to look into even the uh, you know formation of shear band uh, uh, shear band thicknesses and the formation of the failure plane and also uh, you know uh, status of the uh, you know front elevation of the model before failure and at failure uh, so this is actually important in, uh, information can be derived. So you can see that the classical uh, you know the slip circle failure which is actually shown here from the testing uh, done at Ruhr University Bochum Germany. So this is a typical undrained testing which actually the slope model height of the slope is about 18 centimeters that is the H is 18 centimeter. So what actually has happened is that moment the height you know the gravity level increased to 33 gravities then you can see that the slope has actually undergone a slip circle failure and this shows that the validity of the similitude under the undrained conditions. So this shows that the requirement of the you know the you know, centrifuge based physical model test to induce failure and then here it means that the critical height of the slope is nothing but 33 into 180 mm. So that is equivalent height in meters is the you know critical height at of the slope at this particular soil at failure. So uh, this relationship between prototype and model heights at clay slopes at failure is shown here. So here uh, HM is equal to 18 centimeter it can be seen that uh, you know the slope is actually found to fail at uh, uh, you know uh, 33 gravities which is actually shown here is about the height of about 6 meters. 
So this different uh, heights of the slopes have been tested and uh, you can see that uh, the here these are the large uh, centrifuge equipments were used and this is here the small centrifuge equipments were used. So the errors due to some small centrifuge uh, uh, testing uh, actually lead to some uh, you know uh, uh, some uh, discrepancies but what can be seen is that when you have a large uh, beam centrifuge uh, we can see that the consistency in results the modeling of the models uh, were found to speak well and uh, indicate uh, the performance of a uh, you know critical height of a failure whether it is at 5 centimeter uh, 5 centimeter or whether it is at 12 centimeter whether it is 18 centimeter you can see that the horizontal plateau can be obtained. So uh, this is the prototype height in, uh, y, in the meters in y axis and model height in x axis for example here it shows that when model height is uh, uh, you know uh, is, uh, uh, is somewhere uh, say 18 centimeters and uh, if uh, uh, prototype height cannot be equivalent to that because this is the height at failure. So it actually has uh, you know uh, uh, you know this is at factor of safety is equal to 1. So the merit of the large centrifuge also is shown in this particular slide. So after having uh, seen uh, two examples of slopes in sand wherein we said that uh, centrifuge model testing is not required as long as the sloping inclination is less than uh, uh, phi the beta less than phi. And if the slope inclination is actually greater than uh, phi we said that the slopes are tend to fail but when we come to uh, slopes in clay particularly unrained conditions with phi is equal to 0 we said that the centrifuge model testing is warranted and uh, so let us uh, try to look some two different uh, distinct bearing capacity problems one is the footings on sand uh, let us say they consider a, a footing having a width b uh, is subjected to uh, you know at a embedded at a depth of df. Uh, is subjected to a concentric load of Q. So in the case of footings on sand the bearing capacity in addition to friction angle depends upon the, the size of the footing. So let us look into this these are the typical uh, failure planes you can see that this is uh, you know the elastic wedge which is actually formed and then these are the radial shear zones and this is actually resistance uh, generated in the uh, embedded depth zone for a above the base of the footing. So this inclination is about 45. 45 minus 5 degrees 45 minus 5 by 2 45 minus 5 by 2 and this size is the breadth of the footing and this is the resistance which is actually derived to counter this movement for example when the footing load is applied and this block moves this side and this block moves this side and this is countered by the friction actually mobilized along the periphery of this failure surface these are the failure surfaces which typical failure surface which are actually shown in this particular slide. So this is the effect of the embedded depth of a footing that is nothing but the gamma df that is confinement due to embedded depth. Now we can actually get for the footing on sand let net ultimate bearing capacity that is nothing but q ultimate minus gamma df is nothing but qd is equal to half gamma b n gamma plus gamma df into nq minus 1. So this is we have taken like a continuous footing. So uh, wherein uh, we, have, we have written that net ultimate bearing capacity is equal to qd is equal to half gamma b n gamma plus gamma df into nq minus 1. Now this is simplified by writing uh, qd is equal to q n gamma by 2 uh, plus q into nq minus 1 into df by b into b the whole bracket is multiplied by b. So this implies that the wider the footing the greater is the bearing capacity. So the wider is the footing greater is the bearing capacity. Further the bearing capacity footing on sand is derived from two sources one is from the frictional resistance due to weight of the sand below the level of the footing other one is the frictional resistance due to weight of the sand surrounding the surcharge or the backfill that is you know due to this and due to you know all around the footing particularly in this zone also. So one is resistance offered in this zone and resistance offered in this zone that is what actually we are talking. So this implies that a study conducted at 1G does not help in predicting the bearing capacity in the prototype because the smaller is the footing then you know we have got the less is the ultimate bearing capacity. So when B is reduced by 1 by n times 
uh, you know 1 by uh, 1 by n times the b becomes so uh, small so the bearing capacity also will be small so this is also uh, you know evident we have discussed that ultimate bearing capacity of a footing is bound to function of several parameters and we have said that q by gamma b is equal to function of e and the friction angle sigma c by gamma b that is the crushing strength of the grains and the grain to grain cohesion that is sigma g by gamma b and e g that is the elastic modulus of the grains uh, e g by gamma b and then d g by b that is the d g is nothing but the average particle size to raise to uh, to ratio of average particle size to uh, breadth of the putting b. Now uh, so we have said that footings on sand uh, because of the uh, you know the requirement whatever we have discussed. Uh, in order to have the similarity the centrifuge model testing is required because where the q ultimate is actually found to a function of q d net ultimate bearing capacity is found to function of the size of the footing. Let us see in case of clay uh, undrained uh, condition where phi u is equal to 0 and we have only the resistance from C u that is the shear strength of the soil and weight of the wedge and shear strength of soil along the failure plane tends to resist failure. So you can see that the failure planes are distinctly different uh, you know in case of a uh, you know clay but when you can when you took it here in case of the uh, you know uh, sand you can see that the failure plane the elastic wedge is actually form and the failure plane is actually this uh, portion is actually shifted vertically down. So this is because of the, the roughness and the friction of the uh, friction caused by the material that is the surrounding soil and that is the sandy soil but in case uh, in case of clay that is uh, absent so because of that you actually have uh, you know the failure plane starts immediately from that the, uh, the elastic wedge formation will not be will be non-existent. So you can see that this is uh, you know the typical failure surface which is actually forms here. Uh, so uh, the for the footings on clay the normal force across the surface of the sliding can produce no frictional shear resistance on account of phi u is equal to 0. So ultimate bearing capacity can be given by q u is equal to c u n c plus gamma d f then net ultimate bearing capacity can be obtained by q d q suffix d is equal to c u n c plus gamma d f minus gamma d f. So it is actually function of only the shear strength of soil and n c for long and continuous footings we can write net ultimate bearing capacity is equal to 5.14 cu and where nc is equal to 5.14 here for rectangular footings big for having dimensions breadth and length then we can write from skempton 1951 as qd is equal to 5.14 cu into 1 plus 0.2 into df by b plus 1 plus 0.2 into b by l so these are the depth factor and shape factors uh, which is uh, nothing but 5.14 cu uh, cu that is nothing but uh, as uh, uh, you know uh, this is a concentric load the inclination factor is equal to 1. So 5.14 cu into 1 plus 0 0.2 into df by b uh, into 1 plus 0 0.2 into b by l. So this can be seen that in case of a saturated undrained clay when we have so even if you take tau, tau versus sigma the more circles actually will have, will exhibit identical diameters that means that is irrespective of the, the cell pressure we apply it is whatever the you know the cell pressure we apply you know the it actually generates the corresponding sigma 1 such that the sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is constant. So that indicates that we actually get a horizontal failure envelope and which is independent of sigma. So because of this particular you know using this particular logic when we have got a saturated undrained clay because as the in the case of undrained condition as there is no volume change actually occurs. So the tau is equal to Cu which is in case of a completely saturated and undrained condition. So in that situation what actually indicates is that you know in reality if you are actually having the similar uh, you know bearing capacity problem testing on clay it says that uh, you know the centrifuge model testing is not really required and 1G model testing uh, the small scale model testing is required here uh, there is no term actually of the effect of uh, uh, you know the, uh, the so called uh, the breadth of the footing is independent of the, the size of the footing. So it means that uh, you know as long as we maintain this uh, you know constant cohesion 
and uh, and uh, for the saturated undrained conditions it actually appears that the centrifuge model testing is not warranted for footings on clay. So this is what actually has been uh, described here, here the shear strength is constant and equal to Cu hence the 1G model tests are actually valid in this case as the model size is not uh, important and centrifuge experiments are warranted, uh, centrifuge uh, uh, model tests are not warranted. So let us take cantilever sheet pile walls in sand, let us assume that we have got a retaining wall which is having a height a retaining height h and d is the embedded depth and this is the dredge surface. Now if you see that this particular ratio if d is actually small and if d is like d by h is actually say ensures you know if d by h is small then there is a possibility that instability comes into picture. So the wall will be stable if d is greater than alpha into h where alpha is a function of friction angle phi and where h is the height of the uh, wall retaining the soil. So here in this case the actual uh, uh, force actuating force is the body force due to gravity and the resisting force is the shear, resist, shear resistance generated due to friction. So the scale of the model is not important um, you know whether we do experiment uh, at 1g or ng provided you know if you are able to mention that um, if you are able to maintain t uh, d greater than alpha h. So theoretically it actually appears that the centrifuge model tests are not required but uh, you know uh, in, the com in the forthcoming slides we will actually look into that uh, that how uh, you know the, uh, the centrifuge model tests uh, we show a different behavior. So here uh, you know if you consider a cantilever sheet pile wall. So here also there are two types of you know sheet pile walls one is very flexible and other one is say rigid sheet pile walls. In case of a rigid sheet pile walls what will happen is that the wall rotates about a certain you know point that pivotal point above the toe but in case if you are actually having very flexible sheet pile wall there is a possibility that the wall undergoes you know a failure you know buckling failure here and undergoes uh, you know permanent uh, hinge formation can actually occur here somewhere here where that is the point where the maximum bending moment is generated. So uh, theoretically for cantilever sheet pile walls in sand uh, it says that uh, you know the centrifuge model tests are not warranted as long as uh, d is greater than alpha h where alpha is a function of uh, friction angle phi. Now let us consider for stability of the wall. Uh, particularly if you are actually having uh, clay. So in this case both on the uh, dredging side that is uh, most um, this is the dredge level and this is let us say a point A and this is the D embedded depth and here this is the retaining height and here and here both actually locations we have uh, clay. So let us look the how the stability of the wall uh, this particular expression is obtained uh, through a detailed explanation wherein we can actually look here uh, with uh, the for the same example here the cantilever sheet pile wall in clay where phi is equal to 0 and uh, with, under, uh, with, uh, with uh, prevalent cohesion only. So here uh, we can uh, we it what, uh, what actually happens is that the wall rotates about a uh, you know a toe that is actually this point here and this is the rigid surface and this is the retaining height and this, this is actually the level at which up to which the tension cracks can occur. So Z0 is nothing but the, uh, the depth of the tension cracks and uh, now let us see sigma A is equal to active earth pressure is equal to Ka sigma V minus 2C root Ka but because of the phi is equal to 0 uh, Ka is equal to 1 and Kp is equal to 1 okay and the sigma P is equal to that passive earth pressure because here the wall moves away from the backfill and here it actually moves towards the backfill here. So here the passive case actually arises. So sigma p is equal to kp sigma v plus 2c root kp. Now let us take pressure at level of point A. So here what we have is that gamma h that is the so called you know the ka gamma h where ka is equal to 1 with that gamma h minus 2c and which I can write it like gamma h is equal to gamma h minus q u because q u unconfined comes to strength of the soil is equal to 2 c. So we can write gamma h minus 2 c. So this ordinate at this point just above the dredge line 
is gamma h minus 2 c. Now consider the resultant uh, uh, of the passive and active pressure at any depth y below the dredge level that is so if this is the dredge level whatever we have said and uh, we can actually take below the dredge level that is uh, at y is equal to 0 it is at the you know dredge surface that is at point A. So the net pressure is actually obtained as gamma v that is nothing but uh, you know uh, which is nothing but this portion plus uh, uh, gamma v plus 2 c gamma v plus 2 c is nothing but because why we are actually measuring from this point. So k gamma v k p gamma v so k p gamma v k p is good 1 so gamma v plus 2 c minus gamma h that is plus gamma y. So h plus y is becomes because this entire portion is under active case okay gamma h plus gamma y, y minus 2 c that is k gamma h minus 2 c root k a. So as k a is good 1 we can write gamma h plus gamma y minus 2 c by simplification the net pressure is nothing but 4 c minus gamma h this is at y is equal to 0 we also get at y is equal to 0 uh, we get 4 c minus gamma h that means that 2 q u minus gamma h. Now by equating by this is the net pressure diagram where we have got 4 c minus gamma h acting over depth, depth d and gamma h minus 2 c acting over uh, this depth uh, excluding uh, you know the so called uh, you know the tension crack depth. So at pressure once, crack, once tension crack actually occurs then this portion of the pressure is relieved from the earth pressure. So for stability of the wall we can we can obtain uh, you know by comparing the pressure acting this side and pressure acting this side a uh, net pressure we can actually get 2 q by factor of safety should be equivalent to gamma h should be equal or uh, equal to gamma h 2 q u nothing but 4 c u. So 4 c u by factor of safety should be greater than or equal to uh, gamma h that is what is actually written here in the third slide here of uh, module 7 and 11 lecture 10 is 4 c u by factor of safety greater than or equal to gamma h. So this is what actually we have used in uh, explaining uh, you know whether the centrifuge model tests are required or not is by 4 c u by factor of safety greater than or equal to gamma h. So this is actually obtained from the net pressure diagram which is active side and the passive side below the dredge level. So in this case the soil is saturated having constant cohesion. So it actually appears that uh, here also you know you can see that C u by gamma h actually term is coming. So like in slopes in clay here also it implies that any experiment done under 1 g will have to be under uh, prototype condition and the actuating force is again body force due to gravity and resisting force uh, is the shear strength due to unrained condition. So any experiment under 1 g uh, will have to will have to be done under prototype conditions only if you are actually doing a centrifuge model test with uh, if you are uh, in, if you are actually doing a small scale physical model test at uh, normal gravity this implies that you know this is uh, not realistic and may not represent the uh, you know the uh, equivalent uh, full scale model uh, in the field. So in uh, conclusions in the relevance of centrifuge based physical modeling what we actually have did from the considering examples is that when the body force due to gravity is the only actuating force the shearing resistance due to friction is the only resisting force then 1G model test would be adequate for studying the phenomenon that means that including the ignoring the dilatancy of soil when the body force due to gravity is the only actuating force and the, shear st and the shearing resistance due to friction is the only uh, resisting force then 1G model test would be adequate for studying the phenomenon. When actuating force is an external force and not the body force due to gravity then the resisting force is the constant under equation then also you know 1G model test would be adequate that is actually what we have said is the bearing capacity of the footings on clay. So in all other cases like uh, slopes in clay and uh, slope uh, in the retaining wall in uh, clay what we said is that the centrifuge model uh, based physical model tests are required. So in this particular uh, the discussion uh, of this lecture what we have said is that uh, you know for considering uh, similar uh, the simple geotechnical problems uh, we try to bring out the relevance of the centrifuge physical model testing. Then what we said is that like we in, in, in uh, uh, agreement with whatever we have been discussing if you are having footings resting on sand it says that the centrifuge model testing is required when you are actually having footings 
resting on clay uh, it says that the 1G model tests uh, will uh, stand good and if we are actually having uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, cantilever sheet pile walls in clay it says that the centrifuge model testing is uh, warranted and uh, when you are actually having uh, centrif uh, you know cantilever sheet pile walls in sand it says that uh, the, our analysis says that theoretically the centrifuge model tests are not warranted uh, you know because uh, as long as uh, d is greater than alpha h. So now you know this particular uh, you know uh, discussion about uh, whether the centrifuge model tests are warranted uh, particularly for modeling, uh, modeling, modeling of a cantilever sheet pile wall let us look into this with the, uh, the tests which are actually have been done uh, at IIT Bombay. So here the failure modes of uh, cantilever sheet pile walls are given. So we have two typical uh, failure modes one is the wall failure uh, you know other one is the material failure. So uh, in the case of uh, the upper figure where the, uh, the you know they have what actually happens is that uh, you know the material failure the soil failure occurs the failure due to rotation about point A. So you can see that the wall undergoes a failure uh, rotation and about a point A that is the point of rotation then we have got active pressure and a passive pressure and here it this portion comes towards the uh, you know passive zone and this is active zone. So uh, this is the uh, net pressure where uh, you know where you have got active and then passive and then here, here again passive and then active. But in case when you are actually having a failure due to formation of a plastic hinge that is the material failure material of the, the sheet pile wall and if H is the uh, you know height uh, of the retaining reta the soil above the dead surface D then you know we can see that this is the active pressure and this is the passive pressure and at this point this wall tries to undergo rotation and formation of a plastic hinge actually takes place here. So this particular issue was actually has was modeled uh, by using variable gravity method uh, and then also verified by using uh, you know uh, by uh, by numerical modeling. So here uh, consider a cross section of a flexible retaining wall uh, test setup where uh, the uh, wall is actually instrumented with uh, strain gauges basically to measure uh, uh, the bending moments. So the bending moments are actually obtained by uh, pasting strain gauges and calibrating uh, by applying the known loads and once we get we actually get the for each uh, uh, application of the load we will get the bending moment uh, theoretically can be calculated and for each application of the load the response of the strain gauges uh, to the applied load can be obtained. So based on that for each strain gauge uh, a calibration factor of uh, bending moment with uh, volts can be with uh, output volts can be obtained. So the uh, uh, in the linear range if you are actually taking and that is actually gives the calibration factor for the uh, individual uh, strain gauges. So once uh, during the test once it is actually subjected to uh, let us say in this particular method uh, what we have done is that we have taken a plain strain container we are having 76 centimeters in length and uh, 20 centimeters in the breadth and uh, having uh, you know retaining height of 21 centimeters and uh, 15 centimeters is the uh, in embedded depth and uh, the wall is 2 centimeter above the uh, you know the uh, base of the uh, above the base of the container. And uh, uh, what has actually has been done is that uh, you can see that LVDTs are used to measure the uh, surface settlements and LVDTs are used to measure the lateral movements and these strain gauges are used to measure the uh, bending movements during flight. Uh, so here uh, uh, you know the perspective view of the model prepared uh, for uh, uh, mounted on the uh, swinging basket of the and large beam centrifuge facility available at IIT Bombay is shown here. The wall is modeled using a thin aluminum plate having 3 mm thickness and the sand was actually a fine sand and which is having a average particle size of about 0.15 mm and is a poorly graded sand and which is placed at 55 percent relative density purposefully to induce you know large lateral earth pressures and here what has been said is that in order to observe the formation of the rupture planes uh, colored thin colored sand lines were actually drawn both on the uh, active side as well as towards the passive side also. 
So this is you know as it has been told that this particular method the testing was actually adopted is the variable gravity level testing. So the wall the model has been subjected to increased gravities wherein this is actually this is at one gravity and and this picture actually obtained from a camera mounted in front of the model so that it captures pictures of the desired you know area 1g and this is at 20g and this is at 30g and 35g so you can see that as the gravity level is increase you know though we are actually though it each graph theoretically it actually says that you know the d by h ratio at 1g it is stable but it doesn't mean that you know as 20g the same stability is actually ensured so that's what actually in the previous discussion when we have discussed about the relevance of centrifuge based physical modeling we said that as long as you know d is greater than alpha times alpha times h we can ensure that factor of safety that is only valid theoretically but in reality it also depends upon the you know the the stiffness of the sheet pile wall and you know in case of when you have got a you know some flexible sheet pile walls which are actually very weak in nature then you can see that you know you have got a situation like the formation of a you know the plastic hinge and then the development of the rupture lines can be seen very clearly here. So the close view of the picture at 35 gravities is actually shown here so this actually shows that the wall actually has undergone a permanent deformations and the bottom portion is not subjected to any movement and it can be seen that and this portion actually has undergone the multiple cut like you know slip planes and this indicates the so called when we take different lines and at the top also this has been observed over the length you know the breadth of the container because and the we have taken a plain strain container so because of that the entire portion get shifted downwards like a step type deformations and so this is one of the classical failure which actually observed for the deformation of a sheet pile wall embedded in sand with a very very low you know stiff wall. So this is a variation of the retained soil settlements with the distance from the back of the wall so you can see that uh, when uh, at 20 g 30 g 35 40 50 g you can see that the settlements uh, continue to increase so these are the crest settlements and these are the settlements away from the uh, you know uh, from the crest of the wall so uh, again uh, so as been told here so this is actually from the front elevation can be seen that and this is the wall so these are the step type deformations which are actually shown and uh, the close view of uh, the wall with the Rankine rupture planes is actually shown here. So you can see that this one one plane passing here and one plane passing here, and uh, the uh, the uh, plane actually finally culminates at this particular point here. So the from the uh, data which is actually obtained from uh, uh, strain gauges and uh, the uh, bending moment is actually plotted. So you can see that the bending moments are found to increase with G level. So this is at you know at 10 G, 20 G, 30 G like that. And once we have you know dropped the gravity to you know to 1 G, so there is a net bending moment which is actually is shown here also. So you can see that with a during when the centrifuge test actually reached beyond gravity level up to 35 G. So you can see that you know the sharpness of these curves tend to increase, and with the actually which actually happened because the wall has actually has been subjected to a bending moment, which is actually more than the plastic moment capacity of the wall. If that attains actually there is a attenuation of plastic hinge takes place, and that's what actually happened in this particular case. So here the same issues actually you know compared. Uh, with uh, you know finite element uh, analysis of the same problem with increasing gravity by using Spandine software wherein uh, when you compare here you can see that at this particular point uh, the plastic moment capacity of a 3 mm thick wall made of aluminum having uh, you know eg that is the e of aluminum about 72 giga pascals which is actually obtained as uh, you know uh, the plastic moment capacity is about 326.67 newton meter per 
meter. So it can clearly see that this particular point actually it has crossed that plastic movement cap capacity and went into or formation of the plastic hinge failure of the uptime. In case of Fernandel method also you can see that uh, the sharpening of the bending moment can be observed. So uh, this is uh, the deformed uh, deformation of the soil elements on the sheet pile walls at 35 g basically you can see that here also the plastic hinge formation can be seen very very clearly. So variation of the cumulative maximum bending moment with uh, G level is actually plotted and uh, when, you, when you see that uh, as, uh, as with an increasing G level the bending moment is actually increasing the same situation also measured in the uh, you know FEM and this is actually level where uh, you know the so called uh, uh, 326.6 uh, Newton meter per meter that is the plastic moment capacity. So you can definitely say that somewhere between 35 to 40, uh, 40 to 45 the wall actually attained or uh, you know the plastic hinge formation actually has uh, taken place, inception has taken place and uh, developed further. So uh, this is what actually uh, you know we have proved by using this. So you can see that the post investigations have actually revealed that the so called uh, you know the plastic hinge actually formed 52 mm below the uh, you know below the dredge, dredge line and uh, this is the 150 mm uh, which is the depth. So you can see that this is actually point physically uh, you know here at this point. So you can see that uh, you know this is the point where the sharpening of the bending moment also occurred. So this is uh, you know this is also correlated with uh, one of the uh, you know problem. Uh, which actually happened in uh, one of the uh, project in uh, uh, in uh, one of the sites wherein uh, in order to have some uh, diaphragm wall construction 7 meter uh, you know behind this particular face of the wall uh, the, what actually has happened is that the wall was actually observed to deform at, the, at, at, uh, at this level the wall was actually observed to deflect about 0.5 meter also. When the post investigation analysis actually have been carried out Touchment has been found that you know the wall which is uh, element which is used was having inadequate suction modulus and that led to the formation of a plastic hinge. So uh, you know this is actually the relevance of the what particular practical problem what actually has been discussed but the only difference is that in case of uh, in this problem there is a uh, dredge level and then occurrence of what is also there. So let us consider uh, you know a typical uh, you know uh, failure uh, uh, study for a test at 40 g. So here uh, it same container is actually used wherein we actually have got uh, uh, a uh, rigid retaining wall aluminum and a hinge is actually placed at this point. So this is 0.24 meter at 40 g it will be equal to 9.6 meter and this will be 0.4 meter at 40 g it will be equal to 16 meters and this is 0.36 meters this is equal to about 14.4 meters enter depth of the container is about uh, 0.41 meter that is 16.4 meters at 40 g. So the base layer is actually having 0.06 meter into 40 is about 2.4 meter and here this portion is actually fixed in order to prevent the sand particles entering into the hinge thin polythene sheets are actually placed here as shown in this figure. So what actually has been done is that the wall is actually propped initially with very high pressure and the centrifuge gravity is increased from 1 g to 40 g in order to prevent the passive you know uh, passive uh, uh, mode of failure a mechanical stopper was actually provided this side so that uh, you know uh, the uh, wall will not move towards the uh, you know towards the backfill. Uh, so we, here particularly we wanted we are interested in modeling the active uh, 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 mode of failure for a retaining wall. So once we wanted to model the active weight of failure what actually has been done is that once uh, we reach to that particular gravity. Uh, so this when we withdraw the pressure at this point to 0 then what will happen is that uh, the wall tends to move away from the backfill. So this is clearly shown in the next slide with a GIF animation uh, which, which can actually shows that this is actually a picture taken by a camera at 40 gravities. So you can see that uh, the pressure which is actually released uh, uh, when it attains in 40 g. So you can see that the formation of uh, you know rupture planes. So this is the test which is actually we have done at 40 gravities and where you can see that the failure surface actually moves like uh, occurs uh, like this. So this is another typical example of uh, you know the retaining wall uh, 
uh, mode of failure particularly active state of uh, failure which actually can be uh, is actually tested at IIT Bombay. So in this case uh, consider uh, you know let us say that we wanted uh, currently very recently in uh, uh, 2013 a, a in flight uh, support uh, system was actually developed wherein what we have is that let us say we have got a reinforced soil wall or a soil nail wall or uh, you know you have got a particular wall. Uh, so what we actually have uh, is that we have got a, a wall uh, support system which is attached to a frictionless uh, bearings and there is a mechanical stopper and then you know, a pneumatic cylinder is actually placed here. Let us say that we actually have got two ports and one port allows to put pressure here other port allows to pressure put in the pressure in the reverse direction. So let us assume that initially we have got a P2 is applied and uh, the wall is actually held uh, uh, you know uh, from uh, coming toward this side by uh, restraining with a force adequate force and here also the care has been taken that the wall will not move by putting a mechanical stopper towards the uh, soil wall being tested. So let us uh, look into this and how this uh, happens uh, once we re this is at 1G status so once we go we actually go to NG that means that uh, we have got an equilibrium or K0 condition is achieved by uh, you know establishing your forces equilibrium and forces because of this pressure applied and uh, because this wall is actually supported on this frictionless bearings. So the wall height wall weight and all those things will not come into the picture here. The next level what we do is that uh, we try to uh, apply pressure uh, uh, P4 and remove the support uh, so that now this particular uh, wall uh, at uh, say NG uh, if H by N is equal to uh, is the wall height and uh, when this actually happens at NG so its equivalent height is equal to H meters in the prototype. So let us look this in the uh, you know the real uh, uh, you know demonstration wherein we can see that a uh, 10.8 meters of wall at 40 G you can see that how the wall is undergoing deformation uh, because this particular uh, technique allows one to test actually uh, you know the, uh, the movement of the central wall support system uh, is also monitored uh, by using uh, you know you can see the LODTs which are actually placed here and they measure how much so this actually moves by about 5 centimeters uh, in, uh, uh, in a uh, short duration. So with that what actually happens is that we can actually see that how the wall undergoes movement and then this actually can have an impact on the you know the deformation behaviors and other aspects can be studied. So this is uh, you know uh, type of uh, you know test which actually has been done uh, by uh, at IIT Bombay uh, by developed in flight uh, wall support system at uh, 40G. So this is a typical some reinforced soil wall constructed with marginal uh, backfill material and where uh, it is compacted at wet side of the backfill. So you can see that there is uh, you know the tension cracks are actually formed uh, multiple number of tension cracks are formed and uh, which actually led to the excessive deformations of a wall at the top of the uh, uh, in the topmost zone and uh, this is uh, this so similar situation if the wall is actually there in the field at this one then you know we can see that this type of deformations can actually happen at uh, for a 10.8 meters wall. So in this particular lecture what we try to understand is that uh, the relevance of the uh, centrifuge based physical model testing we are, we are trying to bring and then based on that we actually also try to see some selected examples. So in this module the geotechnical physical modeling where we have seen that uh, uh, you know this how uh, small scale physical model testing at uh, uh, particularly carried out at uh, high gravities is relevant to many of the geotechnical problems and we also have uh, brought out uh, is that uh, if you are actually having certain uh, conditions like uh, like say footing resting on clay there is a possibility that you know uh, you know the 1G model testing the small scale 1G model testing also holds good. Uh, so uh, this is how the you know the uh, num uh, the centrifuge based physical model testing is also applied for number of uh, geotechnical problems uh, for studying uh, for uh, subjected to different types of forces uh, which actually gives the uh, you know the behavior which is actually close to the uh, real full scale structure.